that took a minute. Good evening, everyone. Jose J. Garcia, real estate investor, coach, and mentor. You know, I, I swear every week they, they update this Zoom or stuff gets moved around. Stuff is like you have to go search for it every week. So maybe I just don't get on Zoom enough as I should. So, but we got coachings that are coming and they are going to be via Zoom. So we'll be, we'll have plenty of time to play around with Zoom at this point. So good evening, everyone on Instagram. Also, I know you're joining me here on the side. We're about to go over the deals for this week. As I was talking uh, off air, off Zoom, is uh, we have some, uh, we got quite a few deals that are available that are not on the sheet yet. If you don't have access to our spreadsheet, send us an email, j at garcia, mhu.com, and we'll be sure to send you that. I'll, I would say by in the morning, we should have uh, some of the ones listed from Griffin, which we reviewed today. And then we also have uh, Loringburg, North Carolina. Loringburg, North Carolina, where I spent all my Monday. So making the connection, and we're going to be talking about some of those. So, But again, these are not on the spreadsheet yet, but they will be. So reminder, every day you should check out the spreadsheet at least once a day, see what kind of updates we got. We do have a few deals that I want to go over, and then I'm going to talk about a couple of events that are coming available. You know, time. Time is just going by. I, I can't. It's going by so fast. I mean, it's the end of the year. Some of some investors have been telling me all year round, I'm almost ready to get started. I'm almost ready. It's the end of the year. You still haven't gotten ready. We still haven't started. You know, you, you're behind. But uh, okay, okay. All right. So to turn the camera over i know y'all can't see this very well this is for an idea we're just reviewing these deals giving you an idea of what it is yes everyone should still do your own due diligence you know trust but verify i'll, I'll put it that way I, I do business with many many investors and have been doing for years and i trust what they say but i'm going to verify it. it's just you know that's part of due diligence is what you got to do there's no lack of trust there so uh, newest uploads, like I mentioned, Athens, Georgia is in the mix. It's a slower than what we were expecting. Them. We should have been already closed on that park, but those are coming. That's College Town, UGA. So that, that's a hot market for sure for rentals, flips, et cetera. Those will be available, I would say, by within the next week or so. We'll keep updating you. Livonia. I cannot believe more of y'all are not jumping on Livonia, which tells me you're not studying your markets. You're not studying your markets. You're not studying what's surrounding. You're not studying what's the need and demand, the numbers, the rentals, et cetera. That is a hot, hot market. We had two contractors that were in the area. I had not connected with them for in a while. They used to do uh, work for me in Gainesville, Georgia, which is about 20-ish minutes south of uh, Livonia. Well, both of them have moved to Florida since. And that's what happens when you stop using contractors. Eventually, they just move on somewhere else, and it's one of those kind of things. Can't keep them forever. You know, they just depends on where you're focusing on also. And I do keep my contractors local. So, you know, I've only made an exception very seldom to send a contractor from one area to a complete different area, even different state. Because then you got to think about, you know, everything that goes in with the rehab Part of those expenses would be if I have to ship a crew of contractors to another state, well, now I got to pay for their stay. Now I got to pay for their meals. Now, you know, and it's part of it. It's what it is. But for those reasons, we hire locally. That, that's what we do. So, but anyway, lost both of those guys. They did great work. We are in the process of hiring a few more. I got about 30 interviews for tomorrow. So, which that means is that as soon as I lock up a couple contractors worthy of, we're, we're going to be jumping on these and getting them rehab. But definitely, while they are still on the spreadsheet, Lavonia is a hot market. Not to mention, if you check out the homes, they all have HVACs. Okay, there's no real wear tear damages on the actual mobile homes in itself, other than TLC. I'm going to paint them. You, you know, that's one thing that I was talking with the with the investors is that you know just that update ceiling paint, walls paint, just you know, just bring that fresh look because we are planning on doing a mixture between rent the owns and rentals. So it, it, it will vary. And I mean, this time of year, you got to remember, that's not the time of year where you can come in and flip, not to say that you cannot or is impossible, but the majority of people are a little more focused on holidays. Thanksgiving is next month. You got Christmas and you got New Year's, but then you have tax time, which means this is the perfect time for you to be investing, getting these homes up and ready Put them on the market as a rental, one, two, three months, convert them into rent to owns, take a large down payment, 
or ask uh, the tenants to vacate so that you can sell the property. Opportunities are there, okay? Um, let's go over a few deals. Then, I, then I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of things on here, including the podcast from this past Sunday, which I went back and rewatched it a couple of times, and there's a reason behind that. Columbia, South Carolina, uh, Griffin, Georgia, like I said, there's five more units. When I say units, I'm referring to mobile homes. There's five new mobile homes that are going to be listed tomorrow morning. So you'll be able to see those, review those, et cetera. Uh, and then Morganton, still some availability. And Loringburg, where we have 12, 12 single wives that are going to be listed tomorrow also, tomorrow-ish. Okay, we're going to be listing those. That's another area. New market for us in a sense. We are in, the, in North Carolina, but not in Loringburg. That's, that's a different city that we've been. So, And then, uh, of course, the pads were still in filling. Griffin, shockingly, we are, I think, about seven pads away from maximizing that park. Over 80 homes have been brought into this community. So, I mean, you can imagine that that, that speed of implementation we've been doing between us, other investors, and the park owner, which he is, you know, he's thrilled. It, it's been a process that's moved so much faster. But that's what you do. You see doing one thing over and over, you can't help but to get a little better. Okay, let's see. Griffin 109. Okay. Now the ones in Griffin, I, I will remind the investors because I get these questions and I know y'all ask ourselves agents. So what about the skirting? What about the decks? And is it like this? These are the homes that we are bringing into the community. So they're obviously when a lot of these that are being seen, which you can, you can go out there and see them as is just a reminder that yes, we will be putting skirting around them. We will be connecting the utilities, meaning all the plumbing that goes under the house will be put on. We will put the decks after the plumbing is done. After the skirting is done, we'll put decks on both sides. Now, something like this, you see a small little tear where this uh, came apart. That actually happened from the move. So, yes, that's going to be repaired also. But the rest of the home obviously comes as is. So for you as an investor, think about this no different than a home that was already there. You know, your only responsibility is the home in itself, nothing under. And I mean, think about that brand new plumbing, brand new skirting, brand new decks. Some of these are getting brand new roofs. Can't go wrong. Two bedroom, two bath. This is lot 109. It's, uh, you know what? I don't know why this one's on here because we are actually rehabbing this. So GMHU, when you get a chance, please remove this one from the sheet. But this is what it looked like. And I mean, it, it needed minimal work. I mean, clean out. We are painting all the inside. It had all the appliances. Uh, I think there was a, one little section in the floor in the kitchen. It's just a little soft. We, we are repairing that, obviously. So, but this one is, forget about it. Let's go to the next one. Uh, change this out. So this is not something we've ever done. But we did, and that's the movers brought the mobile home and set it on the wrong lot. They 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 didn't. Thankfully, they didn't actually stage it. They dropped it off. You know, which the next step is to come in and level it, strap it, put the bricks, everything set up. Luckily, that had not been done because they put it on the wrong lot. A lot that has not been uh, inspected anywhere, gotten a permit for yet. So one of those kind of things, but don't matter. The home is located at lot 71 now. It is a two bedroom, one bath. Lot rent is the same in this community. Single wide, double wide size, it does not matter. It's 390 and it does include water, but there's a fee of usage basically on that. Resale value in these markets and those numbers are going up, by the way. Uh, you know, we use conservative numbers to give you an idea and like I said at the beginning of the call, do your due diligence. You figure out what the numbers are, okay? We, we always think best case, worst case, most likely. Most likely is what we're giving you. It does not mean that you can't come in and rehab this home and sell it for 30000 And we've seen it where we're seeing some of these investors do so. How far will you take the rehab will also make a difference, okay? And I'm not going to get into the whole coaching is what you should do, shouldn't do. Uh, some, I think, we're overdoing it, but that's, hey, every investor for each his own, okay? Rental rate for this area, we're seeing right around 800. Asking price for this one as is, of course, needs the rehab, 7,000. But again, the home needs clean out. Uh, I would go ahead and paint them. Maybe I'm starting to enjoy painting on my homes. That's like that new look. But <clears throat> there's no real damages in it. Like I said, this is a clean out, come in, touch it up, TLC. 
Wait for the decks, uh, plumbing, and the skirting to be put on, and it's good to be on the market, okay? We got a couple that are buying, for instance. Uh, let me see. Oh, we got this one in Byron, and I did miss one in Griffin. I'll go back to here in a second. This one actually needs to be moved. It came through a lead from another investor, and we are kind of still in the mix of somewhat negotiating with the with, with the uh, with the landlord. So just one of those kind of things. But the home is really ready. It's a three bedroom, two bath. It's an eighty model, twenty three by sixty double white. It needs to be moved. It's in Byron, Georgia. So if anyone is interested or in that area, Central Georgia knows of anyone need of a double white. Connect with us. You can pay for a referral fee, whatever. We'll take care of you one way or the other. The home in itself does not need anything. You know, seven years ago when I started, homes didn't look like this. I, I say that over and over. I mean, you couldn't walk into our homes. That, that's how much damage they had. And of course, being new, I knew no better. So I just thought, well, this is the last deal I'll probably ever get. So let me just go ahead and get it. Well, looking back, but it did. It, it helped in the sense that I know how to rehab molds now. All right, let me go back to this one, Griffin. And this is, so this is one of our students, investors, which reminds me, if you want to post your mobile homes on our spreadsheet, there is no fee. If you want to put your deal, your mobile home on our spreadsheet, and you want my reps, my admins to advertise, to find you a buyer, a tenant, et cetera, then there's a small fee on that. But that is only if they locate you a buyer or a tenant. OK, so this one is more of a passive income asset. OK, I, I like this in a sense. Some of you investors don't want to deal with the whole rehab or finding a tenant or screening or the material. You, you just see it as a link that you just don't have the time. So what you can do in something like that is go ahead and buy a mobile home that's already rehab and even better, one that has a tenant on it already paid. Well, this is what this is. This is also in the same community, Griffin, Georgia. I'm being told that they're planting grass, by the way. There will be no dirt look to the community. It, it already got all new pavement, et cetera. But this one is a two bedroom, one bath though. We can get you the year, make, model, detail sizes on something like that. Uh, I know for a fact he has a clean title because I gave it to him. <laughs> this is one of those where we had to get a title replacement. The one when we were working on the whole T22s, Ben verifies. Wow, we, we spent hours identifying some of these homes that have been sitting there for, for years. And we got titles to each and every home. So took time. But anyway, so I know he has a title for that. Um, a lot rent, like I said, is $390 plus water based on usage. Active tenant is paying $850. So, so this is where you got to do the math. Now, $850 does include the lot rent. So obviously that would be $850 minus $390. Whatever the difference is, that is what technically you're collecting. Uh, now that is a rental, so it's a month to month rental. So it does not mean that you can't come in buy this and following month, you can bump it up to 875. Okay. First of the year, bump it up to 900, bring it up to that market. Okay. And you already have a tenant there. They could potentially, you could later on sell also as a rent to own. But what makes these interesting again, is that you've eliminated all the task of having to rehab it, find tenant, the rehab, you know, everything that goes in. Asking price is, and I know he mentioned our uh, financing. It is not listed on here, but we can give you that option. It's 27K or best off. So that's what he's asking for the investment in itself. Uh, I mean, I mean, you know, something like this, you, you buy in the next month, you're collecting passive income. So just one of those things. If you're interested in that one and or financing, send us an email and we'll, and we'll send you more details. Let's see. Yeah, I, I did not send the homes running around making connections i met with four attorneys today <laughs> three were good one was an issue but you know we'll talk about that on saturday so uh we are in the process of closing a couple of properties with land so those of course involve a realtor a broker an attorney and they all move so very slow if you will so one of those kind of things but uh we went over the barn so so anyway i did not get to send all the homes that i'm talking about in laurenburg and in griffin to our rep to our admin to post on the sheet but they will be there in the morning so stop the video stop sharing there you go all right i want to talk about the two events that are coming now one of them i'm not going to really advertise it until next week and it's going to be very limited it's a virtual event and i'm talking about that one more strategy every year for the past two years i've introduced a new strategy to invest in the mobile homes 
We have the veteran assistant housing. We have the elderly housing. We have the creative financing. We have the Airbnbs. We have the section eights. So it's been three and three. I'm already working on additional exit strategies. Now, when I say exit strategies, every strategy is another form of passive income. Some of you are one dimensional. You just want to wholesale. You just want to flip. That's all fine and all, but should that not work, then you're left with nothing. So you want to make sure you have multiple streams of income. And that's why we wholesale. That's why we flip. We rent, rent the own, create financing. We move them. Okay. We demo if they need to. All these strategies are just one more source of income. The new newest strategy, which I'm already doing, you know, one thing about anything I coach on here is I want to do it first, try it out, see how it works, and therefore I can teach other people how to do it. So I was going to wait till January, but because of the strategy that it is, the high demand for that is really around holiday time. It's around summertime. It's around going back to school time. And that is lending on mobile home titles. Nobody is lending homeowners on their, against their titles. So this is one of those where find a need, a problem that you can find a solution for and do it. Figure it out. How would you like to, instead of rehabbing a mobile home, okay? Instead of going to find it, instead of going into a community that you may get a yes or no, you can or cannot sublease, you in a sense will be much like a bank. You're coming around the offer people money that they can borrow against their mobile home, against their title. And we have a whole step-by-step -step on how to do this, how you will put liens on the actual title. You will have to review the mobile home to know how much you can lend against because we are right now we're lending 60 to 70% of the value as is. And that's because we're reviewing the mobile home. Mobile homes have to have insurance. If they can't afford insurance or don't want to put insurance, we put the insurance form and tack on to their loan. So, and then you start getting paid immediately because it's a loan against that. What makes this even better in a sense is this is the only strategy that if things go south, you come out better okay, in a sense. Because if you're loaning against a mobile home, against a title, and let's say three, four months go by and they default, well, me as an investor, I don't have a problem taking the mobile home. And that's the reason why banks, credit unions, and other lending departments, they don't like to deal with mobile homes because they don't know what to do with them. They think nobody wants them and they don't know what to do. So they just let it be. If a mobile home comes back to me because there is a default, then I know how to rehab. It. I know how to put it on the market. Now, some of you are saying, well, I, I can get into this, but I don't want to get into the rehab. That's why I was just lending money to make money on that interest and obviously the returns on, on the payments back. That's fine. You have options, okay? And we're going to teach you all this, how to connect with park owners. One thing that a park owner never wants to see is a mobile home be pulled out. So that's a leverage that you can use if you come in as a bank, you have a guaranteed buyer and many more options to that. I want to go ahead and coach that and I'm telling you about that now because again, when do people in affordability housing more so need money the most? Though they're always in need of money, but around the holidays, Thanksgiving, they want to travel, they want to have parties, they want to have Christmas. They want you, you see, you're offering that opportunity for a problem solving. So that's where we came up with the strategy. We'll talk about more of that. Next Tuesday, I will advertise it. I'm going to keep a small group and it's going to be a virtual coaching, not going anywhere. So that's not even an excuse as to I have to travel somewhere. I thought about doing partial live, partial virtual. We'll see. But it definitely will be a virtual call. It's about a two-hour coaching. And again, guys, this is one more strategy that you can use immediately. You will have your phone blowing up with people trying to borrow money. And it's just one after the other. And it's just, it's connections. It's connections. It's letting you in too, okay? Uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas. There is two spots available for Saturday, Saturday morning. Saturday morning, we're going to be live in Jonesboro, Arkansas at the, the community where we have 20 mobile homes we're going to be reviewing. There's a few investors have already sent uh, offers for a couple of the homes, which good for you. OK, well, we will review them tomorrow. I will be back in the office. Thank goodness. Tomorrow's my Monday in office in a sense. And I will review some of those and get back to you. But the goal is for you all to come to the community, join 
and invest. You, you're not there just to learn. We're going to be reviewing these mobile homes top to bottom, talking about budgets, rehabs, numbers. We're going to give you resources, connections. There's going to be a contractor that's going to be there with us. There's going to be a part manager that's going to be there with us. So all these questions you have, get them ready and come out there. Uh, two spots available. If anyone's interested, send us an email. The cutoff is Thursday. What's today? Tuesday. So Thursday is the cutoff either way, whether those two sit seats fill in, fill in or not. So just heads up on that, okay? A lot of planning went into that one. That is definitely out of state. That's that's actually one of our newest markets, one of our furthest markets that we're in at this time. So a lot of things going on on that. But okay, that does it for today. Ah, podcast. I want to talk about the podcast real quick from Sunday. Probably one of the ones, uh, and I enjoy all my guests, all, all the guests we bring and all the guests we're going to bring, we're bringing them because they all have something to share. Sunday Night Coaching, 8 p.m. continues with a series of bringing guests that are going to be talking about mobile homes, mobile home parks. These are business owners, entrepreneurs. Some may not even be into mobile homes, but again, it's always learning from different people, different businesses, and implementing it into yours. That's what the goal is. This past Sunday, we had Andrew, Andrew Keel, who I got to speak with on stage at SECO this past uh, couple months ago. Now, Andrew was talking about the whole syndication, and I got a lot of emails on that. Okay, he got uh, he was speaking about this whole need and demand for affordability housing, and he made one remark that caught my attention. Okay, and that was interest rates as of July went from eight percent to nine percent when it comes to banding, traditional lending, etc. That one percent knocked out five over five million people from being able to be approved. For those of you that continue to ask me, where do you see mobile homes in 10 years? And I ask all of our guests that for a reason, okay? Because I want them to reiterate that what I'm saying. Where do you see mobile homes in a few years? Do you see a need for mobile homes later on in life? Don't look at mobile homes as an object that may or may not be wanted or desired as much as what you should be asking. Will there always be a need and demand for affordability housing? And if you say yes to that, which you should, then that's what mobile homes are. Mobile homes are the last of affordability housing today. Look at the rates going on. Look at the prices of the houses. Look at the rentals. Look at the apartment complexes, condos. They are outrageous. I mean, 1500 for one bedrooms in certain areas where we're charging eight, 900 for two, three bedrooms. You, you think there may be a desire for something like that? Absolutely. Okay. So there is no shortage of need for affordability housing. As of July, like I mentioned, with over 5 million people not being qualified now, everybody has to live somewhere. The need of the man is huge and it continues to grow. Invest today is what I'm trying to get you to do. All right. That does it. That does it for this evening. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you. Instagram as always. The video will be posted on our YouTube. You can watch the recap. And if not, we will see you who joins Saturday, Saturday morning. No live Saturday morning, by the way. Thank you for watching.